up, guys? Just making some uh, cold brew the non-cold brew way. Anyways, we are off. Welcome back to another Tesla Talk Tuesday. But we got some big things to do to get. We got some big things to do today. Unfortunately, we're not going to get to those, but we will get to the Tesla Talk stuff. Anyways, let's get rolling. Let's get to the Tesla, and let's get on to some news. Welcome back to the Tesla. Welcome back to the crazy wrap. And uh, well, let's get to Tesla Talk Tuesday. All right, get the Tesla back better, almost better than ever. Um, but, but, but I still need to replace that key fob battery because we're getting these warning lights and then we got the little red light up there. And if you tap on these, anyways, let's, let's not dwell on that. So, all right, well, we, we're, we're off. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Let's get out of the garage and uh, Tesla Talk Tuesday. We got we got coffee in the car unfortunately yes this is one of those situations where coffee ruins everything we can't do an acceleration because otherwise coffee's gonna go flying everywhere anyways uh tesla talk tuesday so apparently there have uh been some leaked photos of tesla model 3 starting to get produced in tesla gigafactory 3 i believe is the one it's the it's the shanghai factory the one in china that they uh, just finished building um so you know supposedly supposedly they're going to start ramping up production over there soon which is pretty pretty neat and on top of that they also have announced that they are partnering with lg chem to do battery production for i believe the cars over there for that for that gigafactory um so elon musk did say that they would be partnering with other people outside of panasonic in order to meet battery production demands so lg chem is the first one i guess I don't know if they've announced others, but they are announced to be working with them for at least Shanghai Gigafactory 3. So there's that going on. Now going back to the Porsche Taycan, Taycan, I still don't know how to pronounce it. I want to hear like a Porsche official announce it. But either way, that car has apparently set a Nürburgring lap ring record for electric vehicles. The Taycan set a lap record of 7 minutes 42 seconds. Yes, yeah, 742 I believe is the lap time. So that's pretty cool now i would love to see a model 3 performance or even a performance model s go around the nurburgring however i just don't think tesla obviously has that same pedigree as porsche does with the rest of their performance cars so obviously porsche coming out with an electric car wants to show that this electric car is just as good as their sports cars or you know comparable especially for a sedan blah blah blah, blah. so that's why they're doing all of these things um but it would be neat to see a Model 3 Performance go around the Nürburgring and see what kind of uh, lap time that could set. Because it does seem like a very nimble car. You can set the suspension up nicely. You can turn on track mode um, and set custom settings for those cars. And well, the 0 to 60 times are even... Thank you, Tesla. Thank you. Wait, think everybody's just talking to me. Anyways, um, yes. So... Uh, if the Model 3 Performance went around that course, they have a quicker 0 to 60 time, which makes me feel like they can accelerate quickly, which means coming out of corners, they can accelerate more quickly. On straightaways, they can accelerate more quickly. And starting off the line, they can accelerate more quickly, which means maybe a faster lap time. But, but I don't know. And I don't know if there's going to be any way to test that because, well, unless you just get some experienced driver that wants to do it. I don't think Tesla's going to go out and uh, really pay for that. So it would be neat to see, and I would love to see it, but I, I just don't see that happening anytime soon. Now, some other very cool and very interesting news is in July of 2019, just last month, Tesla reported, I think, over 2 million visits to their supercharging network. Uh, now, this is pretty interesting stuff. The amount of energy that was used basically to recharge the cars could power Hawaii for three days. There were two other interesting stats, but I do not remember them. When I get to a stopping point up here, I will rattle off a couple things. But either way, that is very, very impressive. And I'm very curious, out of those two million, how many people have free unlimited supercharging? And out of the rest, who doesn't? Because at some point, 
I'm sure people are using, you know, some of their free supercharging miles that they've gotten with uh, their purchase of brand new cars, but some people might have been paying. And once people run out of the free supercharging miles that they've been allotted, they will have to pay, which means revenue stream for Tesla. So uh, my understanding is that it cost them roughly $9 million in electricity costs in order for that amount of energy, something roughly along those lines. Um, so obviously Tesla has to make at least $9 million to uh, break even. Uh, now, I don't know if this includes operating costs, infrastructure costs, setting up all that stuff, but the point is if they can maintain a greater than $9 million run rate, the supercharger network will be possible. And I, I see that as a definite feasibility um, if they start charging for the use of these supercharger networks. Now, the majority of charging is still happening not at fast charging systems, which means you know the majority of people are charging at their houses, which is fantastic because you only wanna use these fast charging networks, obviously, when you're in a binder, if you need to, or when you're traveling. If you're not doing any of those things, well then, just charge at your house, you know? Take that slower rate, take the time if you need to, and uh, don't rush it. But anyways, um, point is, it's very impressive the amount of uh, charging that is going on, the amount of visits, two million people, or two million unique visits, I guess, so not necessarily two million unique people, but uh, yes, two million visits in, in July, and we got some police activity up ahead. Careful, guys, careful. All right, he is leaving, thank goodness, adios. I'll let him get his distance and then we'll uh, actually take this next exit because we're getting off the highway, I think. Thank goodness. Oh, there's another one. There's another cop. There's, oh, goodness, guys, there's cops everywhere. Anyway, stay safe out there. Make sure you keep it right under 55 because, well, that's the uh, that's the speed limit on the highway here. So, yeah, 50, 55. It's, it's a struggle, guys. 55 is a struggle. All right, guys, not too fast because, as you might be able to see, that as a police officer. So, you know, just. Keeping our distance, now keeping our speed. Stay on Interstate 2. Phew, he's going that way, we're going this way. We're keeping it right under 55. But I may or may not be running without a front license plate, and I may or may not have a legal tin. I'm not saying that I do, I'm just saying I may or may not. Not. Anyways, more Tesla Talk Tuesday. So, real quick. Those two million supercharger sessions in July of 2019, it totaled 72 gigawatt hours of energy, which is... A ton of energy let me see if it says no it just says that the Tesla ha Tesla has delivered over 405 gigawatt hours of energy through the network which results in almost 1.4 billion miles that's pretty pretty crazy so the automaker compared the energy capacity to powering Hawaii for three days the Republic of Ireland for a day and playing your beautiful on repeat from every device in your house because Karen just left you Interesting. Anyways, uh, yeah, so that's that's some pretty fascinating statistics. Now, Polestar has also announced that they're going to be doing a Tesla Model 3 competitor. I don't think it's supposed to come to market, though, for at least another year. Um, they're initially doing, like, a launch or release version that's going to be in, like, the 60, mid-60 60 to high $60,000 range. And then later on, it's supposed to come down to around the mid-$40,000 range. So still a little bit higher priced than the cheapest Tesla Model 3s, but comparably priced as always curious to see what the specs are going to be like performance figures range figures is it going to be you know two modal motors some cars are doing three motors now like one in the rear two on the front for like each wheel so all of that stuff very interesting very cool to see and i'm i'm fascinated to see all the stuff coming out in the future uh, so some final things for today's tesla talk tuesday so earlier this week some solar panels well, I don't know if it happened earlier this week, but news came out that I guess at, uh, you know, Walmart was having issues with some Tesla installed solar panels. They were catching on fire. Um, they wanted to de-energize and remove them. I guess they've come to some sort of agreement. Tesla is going to work to, I think, reinstall these solar panels, keep them up and running and make everything good with the world. So that's obviously good to hear that Tesla wants to do right. Make sure these solar panels are working, keep them all installed on these Walmarts. Um, and it is great to see that Walmart is using solar power for whatever they're using it for, but for part of their energy consumption, they're going green and using their solar panels. So very cool on both sides. Glad they were able to come to an agreement there. It is unfortunate that, that, unfortunate that some were catching on fires and they were having issues with them. Um, obviously, I don't know much about solar panels, so I'm not even gonna try to get into the details. And finally, the uh, I guess there was new updates to the like autopilot software that's out right now. 
Uh, someone with a Model 3 took a little video. There was, there's new animations for when you change lanes. I guess it does like a little shadow box. So normally when you're looking at the, the Tesla screen, I guess on the Model 3, it's just one screen. I'm used to having the, the driver's dash. But either way, there's a visual representation of what your car is on the road and you know cars around your car and the lane lines and all that stuff. Uh, so apparently now you have your car still and when you put like your blinker on to switch lanes It'll show like a little uh, shadow in the lane You know to the right or left of you depending on where you're going and that's I guess where your car is going to go So just nice additions to the animations apparently you can also zoom in and zoom out and like turn the image um, At least on the model 3 because well, it's all a touch screen on the model s the part where you see your car is actually on the driver's dash like straight in front of you and well you obviously can't, that's not a touch screen so that just is what it is but yeah pretty nice features it's cool like I've always said it's neat that they can just roll out these software updates you get them over the air you're good to go you don't have to go to a service center you don't have to buy a new car they just roll out an over the air software update and and you're good to go with these new features so it's very cool that they have this capability I absolutely love it um, it's nice that they've been able to change the user interface even since I've bought my car it's been what a year and a half or so um, so very cool stuff and I, I can't wait to see what they keep coming out with um, but dedicated charger coming soon comes it's 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 installed it's pretty much ready to go soon anyways that's gonna be it for Tesla talk Tuesday yep and uh, if you guys enjoying the content please like and subscribe but until next time thanks for watching